Hey everybody, I'm Delicia and thanks for stopping by the Cigar Vixen channel. Today, after receiving a lot of requests from the What's in the IPCPR bag, I'm going to be reviewing the Pappy Van Winkle Tradition. This is made by Drew Estate. And not to be confused with the other Pappy that they came out with first, this was a super limited run. This is the Pappy Van Winkle Family Reserve, completely different uh, process on the fermentation, different blend and harder to obtain these cigars. They're pricier. They're also only available on the Pappy Co. website. So that is not the cigar that I'm talking about today. I am talking about the tradition. Different band, same um, famous picture of uh, Pappy on the front here. And this cigar is actually available in seven sizes. I'm gonna be smoking the Bellicoso Fino today, which does have a hefty price point. I wanted to point out this one is a, I believe $25 MSRP, and somewhere in that same realm, depending on the size, they're gonna be about that, again, off by a couple bucks here and there, but around that price point. So a, a higher uh, price point on this cigar, as I mentioned, and Coming out of Nicaragua, this is made at the very beautiful Drew Estate factory. And it's featuring, taking a closer look, it's featuring an Ecuadorian Habano Oscuro wrapper over an Indonesian binder and Nicaraguan, and Nicaraguan and Dominican on the filler. This one has not been barrel fermented like the other. This one is just a, more of a traditional type of um, blending and fermentation. Drew Estate is one of the companies that, as far as I know, they do not grow their own tobacco. Um, from what I've seen, I've been to their factory a few times and they have um, a huge inventory of tobacco that's warehoused that they, they do have a great um, relationship, I guess you could say, with a lot of the different growers in a lot of different regions. So they're able to purchase tobacco from a lot of different people to create some pretty cool blends. But, um, Anywho, let's go ahead and take a look. And you know, I just realized that I grabbed the wrong type of cutter for this, but this is one of those cutters that has a stop on the back of it. And since I'm smoking this little bellicoso, I'm gonna have to do a couple cuts. Didn't mean to grab that one. But let's get this one. Ooh, need to oil this thing. Just kidding. Okay. There we go. So a nice draw, very, not too open, almost borderline too open, but it's still, um, it's not too loose, it's a nice draw. The packing itself is, this one feels actually a little different. It's, it's pretty spongy up top, and then in the middle it's a lot tighter, and actually towards the foot, so it kind of is spongier up here and then real tight um, towards the bottom and to all the way up to the middle. So we'll see how that smokes out again on these cigars that are a little bit higher. I did it on the black diamond as well. Um, I'm a little more, not harder, but I guess you could say harder. I'm, you know, if you're paying, if you're a consumer and you're paying that type of money for a cigar, um, you want it to be great. It needs to be fantastic at that price point. Um, this sample was given to me of course during the trade show so i was gifted it um thank you very much to drew estate for you know giving me those samples i did not have to go and purchase it but again for those of you watching if you're looking at buying these which by the way you can find them only at drew diplomat lounges i believe or retailers so again looking at that higher price point we want to see that um, it smokes terrific and it has good flavor all of those things so um The prelit draw has a little bit of a of a toasted toasted bread, a little earthy. Almost a hint of like a graham cracker. If only I had a little glass of some Pappy uh, bourbon, that'd be fantastic right now. Unfortunately, I do not at the moment. It is a very good bourbon. I'd love to hear your guys' comments, those of you who, who uh, drink Pappy.
Good stuff. Get this thing lit up as evenly as possible. So this gives off a very nice combination of a light cedar, there's a nuttiness to it, and a little bit of a leather um, right off the bat. Not a lot of spice, in fact, pretty altogether muted on any sort of spice right now. You pick up a tad of a, of a very light pepper on the retro, very slight. A little bit of um, a sweetness in there. A slight vanilla sweetness, I guess you could say. Um, not very strong, it's more so those first three notes that I mentioned, again, going back and forth with the cedary. Fairly leathery and a little hint of the nutty, uh, more of like that creamy nut, like a cashew type of a nuttiness to it. And again, just a slight undertone of a vanilla, very slight, you kind of have to search for that. But um, off to a, a good start, I'm gonna go ahead and smoke it down and check back in with you guys, of course, for the second third. So coming back in on it's pretty much the end of the first third, but I'm having a little bit of difficulty. Um, the burn line is super jagged. Like it's, it's not tunneling, but it's like, it's almost like a, if the ash would have fallen, it probably would be coned because there's a, there's almost like a hole on the inside of it that's burning really fast. And then the exterior, like the wrapper and all that is a slower burn. So it's kind of burning a little odd. It's also been very um, difficult to keep it going, to keep it, you know, smoking um, almost to the point where it's, I'm probably smoking it faster than I should be just so to keep it from going out, which is making it a little warm and a little mushy almost up here. And um, that part's not really cool, but it's kind of like a, it's not an easy smoke, I guess you could say. It's something that requires um, a lot of attention. And I had a burn issue with the other one that I smoked, um, but it was the same size. I haven't smoked the Corona. I think I have a Corona and I have one other size and I haven't tried those sizes. I just smoked this, uh, the Belicoso, before I did this, I'm doing this review and um, Similar type of thing, not so bad on that particular interior burn, but it was still kind of a funky burn line to it. And again, more more effort to keep it lit. I mean, when you look at it, the color of the ash is very nice and it's, it's somewhat tight, but just the, the smoke on it, it just seems a little... Um, it's a little different, like you don't necessarily see the actual wrapper burning good. It just is kind of odd. Um, flavor wise, not a lot of uh, exciting stuff going on. There's a little bit of an anise in the background. You almost pick up a hint of a floral something, but it's very muted. You have to really like I'm really searching for these flavors to try and pull out something. Um, there's still a bit of the nutty it's not as creamy as it was but you just kind of get that flavor of the nuttiness and still a bit of leather i'm going to go ahead and take off the main band here um, i took the foot band off almost right away because it was um you know on this size it's not not a lot of room to to smoke but 
yeah, so far, um, not super impressed. I'm going to keep smoking it and hopefully it kind of cools down a little and maybe it'll, after I ash it, maybe it'll kind of, um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to smoke it down a little bit more and check back in for the final third. So coming back in on the final third of the Pappy Van Winkle tradition, the flavors have not changed a whole lot. There's been subtle nuances that kind of came into the mix slightly. Um, there's been an increase in the black pepper. There's also been a little bit of a cinnamon uh, spice to it, but not a lot, just a hint of it and more so on the front uh, versus like on the finish of it. Um, more anise picked up as well as a little bit of a, a raisin type of a sweetness, but nothing that was really like, wow, it was kind of just mediocre, I guess you could say. The strength is very mild, so if you are somebody that enjoys something, you know, looking for something on the, on the lighter fare, this would be a, a pricey but a, a good tasting cigar for you. Again, nothing that jumps out at you as far as the flavor. So, I mean, in my opinion, is it worth $25 or that higher price point? Not necessarily. I mean, I think that there's a lot of other cigars in their portfolio that are much better um, and not as expensive. But again, um, taste is always subjective. So those of you who are looking for some of the flavors that were mentioned earlier might be up your alley. I wasn't impressed with the way that it burned overall. And again, that happened not as severe. This one was pretty severe, but the other one that I smoked had a similar type of wobbly burn, a little bit different pace on that burning. But um, yeah, just, you know, starting to warm up a little bit now. So I'm kind of, this is where I'm going to basically end it. It's got kind of mushy and a little bit warm, making those flavors kind of harsh. Um, yeah. But um, as I mentioned, you know, it's just one of those things where if you happen to see one, you might want to pick one up and try it out. But I, I don't think you'd probably buy a box. And again, for myself personally, I, I wouldn't see, you know, buying this particular cigar, but to each his own. And as always, I thank you all for tuning in and hanging out. And I look forward to hearing your opinions, your comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you next time. Cheers.